Yes, my name is Carrie. I work in the marketing department at Memorial Blood Centers. But I'm here today to share my story with my beautiful little daughter, Rosalind. Rosalind is pretty special because she was born three months premature. She was born, well most of you probably know that a normal pregnancy is nine months or 40 weeks. She was born at 25 weeks gestation. That's 15 and a half weeks early and she weighed one pound, 14 and a half pounds. So she was considered a micropreme because of her weight and how small she was. We like to think of her as a macro miracle. I have this picture up here because you get a sonogram at 20 weeks, and this is just five weeks before she was born. I mean, you can tell she's a baby, but just to kind of show how early she really was. Um, on July 12th of last year, our lives were flipped upside down. It was um, we were having a perfectly normal pregnancy up until about a week before she was born. We were having some complications. And I've been into the doctor several times that week, even the day before she was born. But the night was a Wednesday night, and I was having severe contractions, of what I know now were contractions. Um, and it was just immobilizing pain. I had told Jesse, my fiance, to call the hospital probably at 5 in the morning. It took me Oh, about an hour to get just from the bedroom to the car. My water broke at home, and that was when he's like, we gotta go now. So we rushed to Mercy Hospital in Kern Rapids, which is about 15 minutes. It was a very bumpy ride the entire way. Um, I mean, everything leading up to her birth was just working against us. But we arrived at Mercy Hospital at 6.30 in the morning, and Rosalind was born at 6.55 a.m. They had rushed me to the OR, and they told Jesse to run and go get his scrubs on by the time he had gotten back into the room Rosalind was already born. Um, they picked her up, brought her over to the table. We didn't know if we were having a boy and a girl, so they said, she's doing good, she's, has, um, her vitals are good, she's moving. You know, we were in such shock and you know we didn't know what was gonna happen because we didn't know you could have a baby that small. So this is her right when she was born. We got oxygen on her. They gave her surfactant to inflate her lungs. Um, otherwise, she would have suffocated and died. Um, and then Children's Hospital, the ambulance came within minutes. I mean, everything was so fast. And we got to hold her right before they put her in her isolate. And this is me. This is when I got to hold her. And then they rushed her down to Children's Hospital here. Um, I was discharged early at probably 2.30 that afternoon, and Jesse was able to go ahead and be with her, and he called me and said, you know, our vitals are still looking good, she is moving, she seems to be doing okay. I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> um, so, we rushed, I got down to Children's Hospital, and it was just overwhelming to see your little baby girl, this is at Children's, all hooked up. She was on a ventilator that first day. She has a pick line, you know, she's on 24-7 care, so they're, they're hooked up and they're watching her blood pressure, her heart rate, her oxygen, you know, those beeping noises. I mean, a week before prior, we were registering for a baby, and then we were in the hospital in the NICU unit. So it was definitely life-changing. That was the first day of our three-month stay here at Children's Hospital. Um, the first few weeks <laughs> were... A little bumpy, I had a few scares. They definitely prepare you for a roller coaster of emotions. Um, she had a pick line put in, it took a few tries to get it set up, so she had a couple of operations. Um, she was on the ventilator the first day, and then she switched to a CPAP mask, which is pretty incredible for a baby that size. She was jaundiced when she was born, so she was under Billy Rubin lights for two weeks. Um, and they put the sunglasses on her to protect her eyes. Um, she was actually breached when she was born, which means she was upside down, and it didn't even seem to harm her because she was so small, but she was very bruised when she came out. She had an open valve, she almost had surgery, but they were able to close it, and she had daily blood tests ran every day to screen for whatever they needed to do, including infections, or so she had blood drawn every single day, which resulted to have her 
needing two blood transfusions while she was here. Um, doctors could tell that she was low on blood because preemies, when they're that small and they're that young, they can't even make red blood cells. So when they're drawing blood from them every single day, um, they need to fill them back up, as they would say. For a baby that small, we did the math, she would only have had 133 milliliters in her body, which is a little over four ounces, so we're talking about a half a cup of blood in her body. Um, so even though the blood transfusions that she received were so small, they were vital and essential to her growth and be able to grow big and strong. And she did, she was a little NICU rock star. Um, she, after the first really bumpy few weeks, she started to gain regularly. This is her isolate that she was, that was her little home. Um, she would gain regularly, she'd start to, you know, at first she could only have like a little drop of breast milk on her tongue. But then she was starting to eat a little bit more and a little bit more. So after two months in the NICU, we transferred to the ICC, which is still here. And um, she just flourished when she got to the ICC. She was gaining about an ounce to two ounces a day. She switched from her isolate to a crib, which means she was retaining her own heat. Um, she was feeding more. She was dwindling down in oxygen, so she switched to a high flow cannula. Um, so she was doing really good. And we were very excited the week they told us we'd be able to bring her home. That was October 5th. It was actually last year's high school workshop. I remember the day. Best day of our lives. And we were so thankful we got to bring her home. She is definitely our little gift of life. And we are so thankful for everything that she was given to be able to, to grow and survive. She is definitely a fighter. And this definitely includes the blood that she received. It's because of donors like you and coordinators who help step up to get every single day so there's blood <laughs> when these precious little patients are in need. You never know, life is so unpredictable, you never know when so many love will need blood, like our little fighter, Rosalind. And obviously this is her today. She's a year old. Nice photo. And she's doing awesome. She's had checkups on her lungs, on her heart, on her eyes, everything seems to be doing well. Oh, oh, oh. That was her one year birthday. <laughs> so, thank you, guys. You're doing incredible work. Is there any questions? Yes, she has teeth now. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.